Although his requests were granted, he was still a bit unhappy when he left home. So it was a very exciting event with a lot happening. His ordination was held at Ta Sim Shan Monastery, built by Dharma Master Suan Tra. Three miles separated the front gate and the abbot's room, and the monastery could house tens of thousands of people. Since Yu Chi Kong's nephew was leave, was leaving home by imperial decree, they rang the bell and beat the drum, which is done whenever there are special events in monasteries. This serves to summon all the Dharma protectors and good spirits to come to serve as guardians. Whenever there is a Dharma assembly, you should ring the bell and beat the drum, not only to notify people, but to notify all the Dharma protectors as well. When the bell and drum was struck at Ta Sing Shan Monastery, one person rang the huge bell and one person beat the huge drum Pong dong, pong dong. When he reached the monastery, the nephew of Yu Chi Kung heard these sounds and he suddenly was enlightened. Oh, before I was the old cultivator. Then he waved his hand and said, I don't want these three cards. Send them back. I've already got enough. I don't want them. He sent the beautiful women away, sent back the wine and sent back the meat and entered Ta Sing Shan Monastery to live the home life. His name was Dharma Master Kui Chu and because of the circumstance surrounding his living home, he is also known as the Three Card Bajira. In the Tang Dynasty, Dharma Master Kui Shu greatly influenced the spread of Buddha Dharma. He taught consciousness only. Because of his extreme intelligence, he could remember every sutra he'd heard. Once the sutra had passed by his eyes, he never forgot it. This record explains the causes and conditions which led him to cultivate the way. Now back to the sutra. When I cultivate towards Bodhi, seeking the enlightened way of Bodhi and cultivating the way, I will gain the knowledge of past lives in all destinies, even within the four evil destinies, the paths of the asuras, of the animals, of the hungry ghosts, and of the hells. No matter what destiny it is, I will know my past lives by perfecting this spiritual penetration. We should not think that it is easy to live the home life. Don't say that living the home life is an easy thing to do. It comes about because of planting seeds of Bodhi in past lives. When some people go to take the Bhikshu precepts of Pao Hua Mountain, they can go no further when they reach a certain cave. A demonic obstacle may arise, causing them to die on the spot. Others have no trouble taking the Shramanura precepts, but when they get ready to take the Bishu precepts, they go crazy and cannot be ordained. There are many people with this problem, which stems from insufficient virtuous conduct. We just finished discussing the three cards patriarch. Although he practiced for who knows how many years in previous lives. Nevertheless, in the life we have just discussed, he had become confused and wanted a cut of wine, a cut of meat, and a cut of women. However, when he heard the sound of the bell and drum, he woke up to the fact that in, the pa in past lives, he had been a cultivator of the way, and so he was able to help Dharma Master Swan Chuang propagate the Buddha Dharma. A contemporary of Dharma Master Quaishas was the imminent Vanaya Master Tao Swan, who specialized in cultivating the precepts. He was never careless in the four departments of walking, standing, sitting, and lying down. 
He practiced each of these with a determined, the deliberate method. He walked like a, a zephyr, like a gentle breeze that blows so lightly that it does not create waves to disturb a body of water. If the wind is strong, the water will become choppy. But if the wind is light, the water remains smooth. That is how this Vinaya master walked. He stood like a pine when he stood up. He stood as straight as a pine tree. He sat like a bell when he sat. His posture was upright and straight, just like a bell. He rested like a bow. When he reclined, his body formed the shape of an anchor's bow. Of an anchor's bow, in the four awesome departments of walking, standing, sitting, and lying down, he maintained himself especially well. He did not casually talk with his mouth. Or casually look at things with his eyes, nor did he casually listen to things with his ears. He did not look at improper sights, listen to improper sounds, speak improper words, or do improper deeds. He only spoke about matters based on true principle, and he only did things that were based on principle. Because he held the precepts so sincerely and well, in response the gods made offerings to him. He did not have the, to prepare his meals because a god called Lu Xuan Cha offered him the one meal he took each day. The three cut patriarch Dharma Master Kui Chu had eaten every different kind of food to be found in the human realm. He had eaten all the different kinds of meat. When he was a lay man, and after he left the home life, he had eaten all the finest kinds of vegetarian food. After he had assembled all this, he gave rise to a thought of greed. I have never tasted the food and drink of the gods. I think I go to the his place to get a meal, because he was a national master, and could do whatever he pleased. He decided to visit. Binaya Master Tao Xuan Su, and so he went to visit him early one morning. When he arrived, and Binaya Master Tao Xuan had received him, he said, "I've eaten everything except the food and drink of the gods. When the god brings you your food today, how about giving me some of it?" Binaya Master Tao Xuan said, "All right, I give you a share. Wait here." Dharma Master Kui Chu waited until afternoon, and still the god had not come. Not only did he not get to eat heavenly food that day, he did not even get any human food to eat. Vinaya Master Tao Xuan did not have a kitchen, rice noodles, only salt or vegetables. He did not have anything at all. He was completely without preparations because he himself only ate the food of the gods, and so Dharma Master Kui Chu had nothing to eat but dirt. There was a lot of dirt there on Chung Nan Mountain. They might have eaten wild plants, but there were only the leaves of trees. Then Dharma Master Kui Chu became. Perturbed, perturbed. It looks to me like you are just a cheat. You claim that gods offer food to you, but we didn't get anything to eat today. I've come here, but I've not observed a single god bring you any food. Vinaya Master Tao Xuan did not reply, but only said, "If you say I'm a cheat, then I'm a cheat. If you say..." Where、well, I'm a liar, then I'm a liar. I don't need to argue about it, because he maintained the precepts. He did not like to speak much. After a while, it got dark. It was twenty-five miles from the top of Chungnan Mountain to the bottom. It was impossible to travel the road at night. Once one descended the mountain, it was another twenty-five miles to Chongan, and so Dharma Master Kui Chu had to spend the night. 
As soon as he reclined on the bed, he fell asleep and began snoring through his nose like thunder. Basically, old cultivators who hold the precepts should not have false thoughts, but Vinaya Master Tao Shuan had a false thought. He is a national master, but he is a national master who hasn't cultivated in the least. He sleep like that. He is just a great crude bumpkin. After he had this false thought, he noticed some fleas on his body. Sometimes people have left the home life, do not bath very often, and their bodies become filthy and attract fleas. When a flea bit Vinaya Master Tao Xuan, he took it off his body and placed it on the ground. After a while, another flea bit him, so he placed that flea on the ground as well. While Dharma Master Kuei Chung nod through the night, Vinaya Master Tao Xuan tried to sit in meditation, but was unable to enter Samadhi since he was troubled with false thoughts all night long. In the morning, Vinaya Master Tao Xuan could not take it anymore, and he said, "You really don't sleep according to the regulations. Your snoring sounds just like thunder." And you kept me from entering Samadhi all night long. I meditated but couldn't enter Samadhi. Dharma Master Kuei replied, "You say I can't cultivate. You're really the one who can't cultivate." The two of them argued back and forth. Vinaya Master Tao Xuan said, "How do you know I can't cultivate?" Dharma Master Kuei replied. You are an old cultivator who maintains the precepts and doesn't kill. But didn't you pick two fleas off your body last night? Well, when you threw them on the ground, you killed one of them. And even though you put the second one down a little more softly, you still broke its leg. Both of these fleas went to King Yama and tattled on you. They said that the old cultivator who holds the precepts killed. One of them and named the other. I had to go and make peace. I spoke on your behalf, saying that you were not aware of your offenses and that the fleas should not seek revenge. Then King Yama released a few from them. When Vinaya Master Tao Xuan heard this, he said, "Huh? I picked those fleas off very slowly last night, and no one knew it." How did you know this is strange? Drama Master Kuei Shi was unhappy and said, "I'm leaving. No gods bring any food to you. You just treat people." And he left. After he had gone, the god Tu Xuan Tra came at noon with food. Vinaya Master Tao Xuan was very unhappy and said, "Why didn't you bring food yesterday? I went hungry, and furthermore." There was a special guest for lunch. Why didn't you come? Lu Xuancha said, "Drama Master, please be compassionate and forgive me. Yesterday, when I came with the offerings for you, there was a golden light for forty miles in every direction. I wanted to go into this light, but I couldn't open my eyes, and I couldn't tell north from south or east from west. I couldn't see anything except the golden light." Well, then, I asked the local earth spirit, a spirit who has about as much authority as a constable. He told me that there was a flesh body bodhisattva here, so everywhere around there was a golden light. Therefore, I couldn't come. Please forgive me. When Vinaya Master Tao Xuan heard this, he said, "Dharma Master Kuei Shu is a flesh body bodhisattva." This is inconceivable," I said. He couldn't cultivate, and that is not like thunder. He was just intentionally being that way. When in fact his state is much higher than mine, God can't can't even get close to him. After that, Vinaya Master Tao Xuan increased his cultivation, and Dharma Master Kuei Shu never again wished to eat the food of the gods. These two old cultivators. Are eminent Sangha members of that period. I will always live the whole life and cultivate pure precepts. I just discussed Vinaya Master Tao Xuan and Patriarch.
equate to two bodhisattvas with whom most people cannot compare. As we now cultivate the conduct and power of the ten great kings of vows of universal worthy bodhisattva, we should also vow to always live the home life. In leaving the home life, we leave the home of afflictions, the home of tribulation, and the home of ignorance. What does it mean to leave the home of afflictions? Everyone has afflictions, but it is only when you can put them down, and you can put them down and not give rise to them that you leave the home of afflictions. The triple realm includes the desire realm, the form realm, and the formless realm. If you can leave the home of the triple realm, then alone you still leave the realm of desire. Nevertheless, you will not have any sexual desire, even though you have not reached the form realm. Still, you see that forms and appearances are empty, to the point that even the formless realm is empty. This is the meaning of leaving the home of the triple realm. In leaving the home of ignorance, you break through ignorance, that is the basis of affliction. If you are able to eradicate ignorance, then the wisdom of the enlightened way of body will become perfected. This is the meaning of leaving the home of ignorance. The third of the three kinds of leaving home. In China, not everyone who lives the home life is able to cultivate. Upon seeing that, a sickly child will certainly die. It is. Customary for the parents to take him to a monastery to have him live the whole life as novice. As a novice, it is often the case that as soon as the sickly child leaves the whole life, his illness is cured, and he does not die. He lives the whole life to avoid death. Although this kind of person has good rules, he must still be confused and not know how to cultivate. He has forgotten how he obtained his good rules, and so it is not for sure that he will be able to cultivate. These people usually go to the monastery to leave home when they are very young. Then there are those who leave the home life because they had they have had a difficult life. They may come from a very poor household, and they leave home because they have heard that one gets food, clothing, and shelter. When one leaves the home life, these people leave the home life for food and clothing. Others decide to leave the home life and become monks because they are old and have no one to take care of them. Then they take young disciples who will be filial to them, because the rule of disciples is that they should be filial to their teacher. For example, they should offer whatever they eat to their teacher first, and no matter what the circumstances, they must always be respectful to their teacher. Some old people who do not have any sons or daughters leave the home life so they can take a young disciple who will take care of them. This kind of person leaves the home life so that he will be taken care of in his old age. And it's not for sure that he will be able to cultivate. Some people are forced to leave home due to circumstances. The patriarch Kui Chu is an example of such a case. Circumstances compelled him to leave the home life, and then he was able to cultivate. In China, there is a law which permits a person to leave home in order to avoid prosecution. Even if he is a murderer, an arsonist, or a bandit, and so there are people who leave the home life to avoid being punished for breaking the law. It is also not certain that these criminals can cultivate. There is one kind of person, however, who can cultivate. Who? These are the people who resolve their minds on body because of the great problem of birth and death. So there are many reasons for leaving home, and you cannot say, "Oh, how can this person leave the home life? This person has such a big temper and so many afflictions." Those who leave the home life do so for many different reasons. Now the text reads, "I will always leave the home life and cultivate pure precepts, 
I have always cultivated and maintained the pure Vinaya, without outflows, never broken, and without stain. I cultivate and maintain the pure treasury of the precepts, which are just like precious pearls, and I have never broken them. I will always be without outflows, which means that I will never be deficient in my precepts. Sutra, be they gods. Dragons, yakshas, or kumbandas, up to humans, non-humans, and the rest, in the many languages of all such living beings, with every sound I will speak the drama. Commentary: Be they gods, dragons, yakshas, or kumbandas. Now we are discussing gods, dragons, yakshas, kumbandas, and all the other gods. How do dragons get to be what they are? In the past, they cultivated the drama of the great vehicle and were extremely vigorous. But at the same time, they neglected the precepts, feeling that precepts were very ordinary and unimportant. Because of this, they were reborn as dragons. Dragons are beings with spiritual penetrations, but they are animals because in the past, when they were humans, they neglected the precepts. In spite, in spite of all their miraculous powers, dragons are still animals. The list of gods, dragons, and yakshas also includes asuras, kinaras, mahoragas, garudas, and so forth. Kumbandas are wider than they are tall, no more than three feet high. They are at least five feet across. They do not have heads or feet. And are shaped like wooden barrels, or sometimes like a winter melon, and from which another name is derived. This ghost waits for people to go to sleep, and then he causes them to have nightmares, in which they can open their eyes and see things, but cannot speak or move. Totally petrified, such a person may want to move, but he cannot. And although he tries to speak, he cannot make a sound. This ghost can really cause harm, and some people are smothered to death by fierce kumbanda. In this sutra, however, the kumbanda is not so evil. The ten great kings of vows of universal worthy reform him so that he becomes a drama protector, up to humans, non-humans. And the rest in the many languages of all such living beings, in the languages of all the different kinds of living beings, whether they're gods, asuras, humans or non-humans, with every sound I will speak the drama. I will use all the various languages to speak drama for all living beings. When I meet a living being, I will speak to him in his language. So try. I will cultivate the pure paramitas with vigor, and never leave the body mind behind. I will banish all obstructions and defilements, and fulfill all the wondrous practices. Commentary: I will cultivate the pure paramitas with vigor. To cultivate with vigor means not to be lazy, and to be unafraid of suffering or fatigue. To be always vigorous is to cultivate the pure paramitas with diligence. Paramita is a Sanskrit word that means to reach the other shore. One cultivates from this shore of birth and death to the other shore of nirvana, and never leave the body mind behind. Life after life, I will never forget or lose the body mind. What is the body mind? It is the resolve to diligently seek for the Buddha way. You do not want to forget or lose this mind. Life after life, do not forget your intentions and resolve. I will banish all obstructions and defilements. I will destroy all of the obstructions, the obstructions of reward, karma, and afflictions. When you are afflicted, it is as if You are defined or filthy. All means there are no afflictions remaining. He will fulfill all the wondrous practices to meditate and put an end to birth and death. Is a wondrous practice. 
when you accomplish what you practice, it is wondrous. If you accomplish what is inconceivable, what is beyond the realm of human conception, then you obtain what cannot be conceived of. This is wondrous. There is no way to think about it. The inconceivable is also called wondrous, for not only can you not speak of it, your mind cannot conceive of it. These methods of practice, subtle, wondrous, and inconceivable, involve in that investigating Chen and getting enlightened. If you can get enlightened, then you can fulfill all the wondrous practices. Sutra from all delusions, karma and demonst demonstrates amid all worldly paths, I will be freed. Commentary from all delusions, karma and demonstrates. What are delusions and karma? Delusion is confused is confusion and also a doubting state of mind. There are three kinds of delusions: view delusions, the delusions of thoughts, and the delusions like dust and sand. View delusions are cause delusions, the delusions of thought are fine delusions, and the delusions like dust and sand are the delusion of ignorance. What are view delusions? When you enter to a state, you give rise to thoughts of greed and love. Thoughts of love breed confusion, and when your confusion enlarges, you become deranged and lack understanding. What is the delusion of thought? Because you do not understand certain principles, you give rise to improper discriminating thoughts. This is delusion of thought. The delusion like dust and sand are extremely many, as numerous as all the most of dust, or as many as the sands in the Ganges River. The ignorance we have in our minds was originally very little, but it has increased to a great amount. For this reason, it is said to be like dust and sand. Once ignorance equals the dust most in the world, and the sands in the Ganges River. For example, if you are idle and encounter a state, you give rise to thoughts of greed and love. Although these are considered the delusions of views, basically they stem from ignorance. Why do you give rise to thoughts of greed and love? Where do these thoughts come from? If you seek for their source, you will find ignorance. Ignorance, therefore, is the source of birth and death. We have not ended our birth and death because ignorance obstructs us. There are eighty-eight kinds of delusions of views. When one has certified to the first stage of a hardship, one has cut off the eighty-eight view delusions. When one has been certified to the second stage of a hardship, one has cut off the eighty-one thought delusions. When one is certified to the third stage of a hardship. One cuts off the delusions like dust and sand. When one is certified to the fourth stage of a hardship, one destroys ignorance, and therefore one's drama nature manifests. Although a fourth stage ahad has destroyed ignorance, he has not done so completely. Even the Bodhisattvas of equal enlightenment has a minute amount of ignorance which he has not yet destroyed. If one can destroy the final minute amount of ignorance, one is satisfied to wonderful enlightenment, the wonderful enlightenment of the Buddha. But because one still has a very small amount of ignorance, which one has not destroyed, one is still a Bodhisattva. Karma refers to the good and evil karma that you create. There is a saying: None of the karma created throughout a million kampas. Is ever forgotten. There is no way that the karma which you have created can be lost. If you do good, then you have good karma. If you do bad, then you have bad karma. Karma is always with you, and so the rest of the verse says, when the conditions come together, you must undergo your just reward. When the conditions come together. When the time is right, you must undergo retribution. 
Undergoing your just reward means that you must undergo what is coming to you. If you have planted good causes, you will receive a good reward. But if you have planted bad causes, you will get a bad reward. If you do wholesome deeds, you will get good in return. In return. But if you do evil, you will get evil in return. Therefore, it is said, none of the karma, none of the karma created throughout a million compounds is ever forgotten. When the conditions come together, you must undergo your just reward.